Hello everybody, hope you're doing very well and welcome back to another cryptocurrency technical analysis where in today's video I am going to be going through Bitcoin in a lot of detail for you all because there is so much to cover and then moving on to EVX and Walton Chain to end so I do hope you enjoy this video and yeah let's get cracking so right yeah where to start on this chart there's a lot of information obviously here. Obviously, when we started at the beginning of February, okay, a few months back now, at the beginning of February, breaking up from this falling wedge, you know, classic technical analysis falling up from the rising wedge, which were the, the 200, uh, 200 simple moving average on the weekly was also acting as support, okay? What happened? We broke up from the falling wedge up to our resistance zone, which is around now 4,200, 4,000, 4,200, top of my resistance box being uh, here 4,266, okay? All I would like to point out is that's where my resistance box is, but we do have this top area of liquidity at around 4,000. I'm going to say 4,450 because that's for me where it's going to be, 4,450, okay? But that's obviously above my current resistance box that I'm looking at and trading off of right now. OK, so obviously fall it, breaking up from this falling wedge, coming up to that resistance, getting heavily rejected and then just forming a series of higher lows over the previous month. Now we are in April, the first today. Uh, so a great day to be looking for the month ahead and what could be happening here. And obviously today I entered into a, you know, quite a big short position from the resistance area right now. Currently, <laughs> my entry was actually... As you can see here, my entry was 4,133. Current price is 4,128. So I am in $5 uh, from the entry point. So this is exciting trade. I'm going to go over now why I entered into this short, okay? And uh, yeah, let, let's just go straight into this. So obviously I see a lot of liquidity to the downside, okay? You have to think that when you are going to be breaking resistance, I really do think that we need to be breaking some of these lower liquidity areas, um, to, you know, to if we want to break up through this resistance, you know, for me personally, hence why I'm in the short, is I would like to see some liquidity taken from the downside first prior to breaking up, if we are to break up, okay? There is... Oops, did not try and click that. <laughs> um, so basically, yeah, what you would want to see or what I am expecting is a move to the downside. Could be even a wick that we just wick down and then move back up. Or, you know, it could be a, a, a sustained move down if, if my analysis is correctly identified. Uh, we could see a, a, you know, a sustained move down. But either way, you would want to see some lower liquidity taken out before going up to try and take these, take these highs because it has simply just been higher lows after higher lows after higher lows. The one higher low that was taken out was this one. OK, so we did take out the higher lows that anyone that was had been buying in this area and had moved their stop loss up to this higher low would have been taken out. So you, we potentially only have real one, two higher lows in this chart. Um, so it is, you know, it's a, fa a factor that you have to be aware of when, when you are trading, um, you know, that, that this look, this high low has been taken out. So really, the main areas of focus are going to be 4,100 and uh, let's tell you the exact symbol, 4,190, okay? And lower side liquidity really is going to be at about the, this 4,000 uh, 4, level, 3,990, say, okay? So those are the two main regions that you could be watching if you are not in a trade right now. OK, that's what I'd be having my eyes on this this red box where you could potentially just see some more noise around in this box until we get a proper break. But yeah, that's really the upward sloping trend line support that you need to be keeping an eye on and this big heavy resistance box. Um, you know, I see a lot of uh, euphoria at the moment that there are so many people, um, especially with how the altcoins are going. There's people turning very um, bullish. And obviously in my last post, uh, getting the headlines with uh, the, the, with the um, avatar obviously being, you know, is Bitcoin going to, what did I say, 5,000 off of this inverse head and shoulders that we have the potential of seeing here. OK, which we were looking at the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder breaking up, right, you know, possibly with a breakup with a 5,000 target. So, you know, I do have that in mind. Um, and, you know, this is an important factor that this is why I wrote on this tweet that, um, you know, I have a risk management setup. So, you know, you shouldn't blindly follow my trades just because I'm entering into shorts doesn't mean that you should like follow me just blindly without having your own risk management setup here because... I am obviously hedged. Um, so I, although I am in a short position right now and I am in prior short positions over the last year that I am still continuing to hold. But today I just added into a short position. Um, so, yeah, this is like an important factor that I am short. But as you all know, I am still simultaneously long in altcoins and obviously still long in Bitcoin itself on Binance. And, if, you know, Binance and Bitfinex, I'm long, but uh, uh, Bitmex, I'm short. 
okay this is just a way that i can manage my risk that if we are to move up yes i will take a big you know not a massive loss but a you know a substantial loss uh in terms of money but not percentage uh that's the important factor yes i'll take a big loss if we move up but it will be negated by the fact that i am in long positions on altcoins and in long positions on bitcoin itself on other exchanges for example binance Okay, so just for an example, let's say we break up. Uh, obviously, that would that would equal a, a loss on my main positions, but it would be negated by the long positions that I'm also in on other coins. So um, yeah, this is just like an advanced sort of hedging strategy that you have to be using if you're playing with large amounts. Obviously, you know, smaller amounts you don't need to hedge. You know, it's not a you know it's not going to be such a requirement. But yeah, as a you know, when you're trading larger amount of capitals, you generally are going to be hedging your positions to at least a certain extent. You know, you, you could just be a small hedge but you would generally hedge just to have that protection um so it's not all doom and gloom if we do move up but obviously my biggest position is a short position so i just wanted to clear that up because you know people that if they do just short here and we break up and they're using all of their capital or all of their equity or you know all their position in this one short then you could potentially get burnt so obviously the momentum and this is where you this is kind of counter trading uh short term we are obviously in this ascending triangle so obviously short term you could say the momentum is with the bulls but then it gets to a point where um you know the bulls get too euphoric and that's where you're going to see a, a, a big red candle shooting them straight back down <laughs> or that's um <clears throat> yeah that's to be honest what i'm expecting obviously in this analysis that i posted obviously well it wasn't so much an analysis but more uh, a quick tweet uh, as i was entering the trade that there is the potential of one more push up in my opinion that we could get to 4200 okay so there you know th that would just take out this this level of liquidity uh, obviously at around 4190 so the potential of that last liquidity push to 4,200 before we head back down, in my opinion. Do not think that we will go straight through this resistance. Uh, but if we do, then I would have to be looking at this inverse head and shoulders. Uh, and just yeah, t t take take a uh, take a loss on my short positions and just go heavily into longs if that scenario is to happen. But, you know, take it one step at a time. This resistance is massive and cannot be uh overlooked okay that's the the key thing you can't overlook this resistance and you know there's a lot of people that are dreaming of you know 6k right now but you know to get to 6k there's there's so much resistance to even get to those levels so um it's just important to to really have a perspective of where we are on a micro time frame so obviously micro this is looking bullish but then when you zoom out to a monthly time frame okay when you zoom out to the monthly okay you have a totally different scenario where this could just potentially be a bull flag a bear flag where we're going to be moving down okay so you come down get a little retracement up here and then you just head straight back down again <clears throat> okay so different time frames different perspectives it's so easy to get caught in an overly bullish mind frame uh, when you see this sort of price action on the hourly okay this looks bullish i'm not going to deny that okay but then when you zoom out to the monthly uh you can see this is clearly bearish okay so especially when you start adding in things like volume um you know this volume obviously just tapering off and tapering off um you know there's, there's obviously a lot more that goes into my analysis than just you know candles uh but you know that for me is just a metric to to be aware of okay and just i would just like to highlight out for you all um what else was i going to show you all here um yeah i think that was about it on bitcoin just really a let, a letting you all know uh, an update on my position I, obviously i couldn't just tweet this out and then not do an update so that was really what i wanted to show you that i am in the short uh obviously i am in prior shorts previously this isn't been my first short i've been short since six thousand. uh well actually i started shorting before that but you know my last short position that was actually open uh was from this six thousand five hundred position so i'm in the short from six thousand five hundred, and then i've just been adding okay <clears throat> adding this pump up I added and then you know continuously adding to larger term shorts uh, as you all know different time frames different amounts of money different ways that you trade okay so that's very important metric to be aware of okay so yeah moving on from bitcoin let's take a look at evx because this was this was quite funny um this was last night so this was literally yesterday at 11 p.m okay so I said when I get back to England next week I'm going to start start trading lower market cap Binance coins I got back obviously yesterday so I am in England right now um, and I said I will do a technical analysis on every single coin on Binance and find the best setups okay so I literally uh, I'm still working my way through it because there is a lot of coins here on Binance but I've got all the setups done 
And today I was very blessed to obviously find this EVX coin where it was finding very nice support on the 0.5 Fib, okay? So this is just very simply taking a Fibonacci from the bottom to the top. Uh, swing, swing low to swing high, seeing the 0.5, seeing the swing 0.5 hold, okay? That's the key that the 0.5 is holding. And then just accumulating upon the 0 0.5. Obviously, I did not accumulate. I just got, you know, to be honest, quite lucky entering into a, just a spot position today. Uh, and then that obviously, yeah, ended up. I did not take profits at the top, by the way, but at the top. But this was just a 0 0.5 to 3 to, you know, trade. Uh, obviously, yeah, I, I, I did sell my position a bit too quick, but you cannot complain about 20%. OK, this actually moved up about 50 percent in total. Um, but yeah, this is like a t type of trade that uh, I do not normally trade these altcoins. But uh, yeah, I just decided to think, yeah, why not? I'm, I'm missing some opportunities here on these lower cap, lower market cap coins on Binance. Um, so, yeah, let's get involved. Uh, normally, I say to the more higher cap, uh, more well-known sort of coins, especially on tether pairs. Uh, but, but because I was holding, as I said at the start of the video, because I am actually holding that long position on Binance, e.g. holding Bitcoin, I might as well make use of it by trading some of these Binance alts. OK, <laughs> so that's the story behind that and why I entered into that long position and got a bit fortunate on this pump. But uh, yeah, you could, well, maybe maybe it was not so much fortunate. It's not that I ran randomly entered. There was a, you know, a strategy and a reason behind the entry and the reason for the target. Uh, obviously, yeah, closing out a little bit too early. That could be the only thing that, you know, this is I need to now, you know, train myself to train, you know, smaller cap Binance coins that, you know, potentially here it would have made more sense if to, to just taking a flat take profit to enter a trading stop loss could have made an extra, you know, 20 percent there. But um, yeah, you cannot complain. Um, so, yeah, moving on to the next coin that I was going to take a look at here is Walton Chain. And what a coin this is. What a coin. Uh, you all know I've been talking about Walton Chain recently. Uh, I obviously like the coin fundamentally. Oh my God, Walton Chain, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, this was just so easy that it's a simply a resistance. I mean, look at this. This resistance, how clear of day is this? Resistance, resistance, resistance. Resistance is broken. What happens? Resistance is broken, flips into support, bang, moving up again. And where are we going to? To the next resistance level. And look at this resistance right here with these green blocks, okay? We're looking at these order blocks, taking them along, hitting resistance totally, okay? And that was, you know, obviously, again, I could have got a few more percent, but, you know, this is a smaller percentage. This is still 32% from the entry to the target, okay? Entry, my take profit one, okay? Just, uh, just at the double top, take profit two, e.g. closing out of the position, OK, so that's where you take profits halfway or not really halfway in this trade, but you take it, you take a percentage of profits and then you close out the overall target. But if you just see here, I mean, look at this. It's very, very nice, like, and, you know, reason to be taking profits. And obviously we are now wicking down below. So, yeah, that's Walton Chain and just finding these setups. Uh, you know, I am literally going to be going through uh, the rest of them today. I got, got about maybe 20 percent of the way through my through my list today. Um, and that, that was just yeah, you've got 20% 20, 20 of the way through that list. And obviously that's because obviously I'm getting to around E <laughs> to, to find this setup. But yeah, there's a lot of setups on Binance that are looking like really juicy. Hence why I want to get in on some of the action. And like I was saying here, uh, yeah, the Binance alts, it doesn't matter that there's no margin trading, trading as they can easily move given uh, given time of the setup. And this was one that I said about yesterday. So this was MTL and this moved like 80%. <laughs> uh, so this is, was another just SR flip where the coin obviously breaks resistance. So we, this is, you know, you have to zoom out a little bit. I'm on the four hour, but there was a resistance line. OK, resistance breaks. OK, you could look at this as an ascending triangle. Resistance breaks. Resistance then breaks. OK, so this is resistance. You break resistance, come back down and hold it. You break up. This one had an 80 percent move yesterday. Uh, yeah, I mean, no, this is just crazy. And that, hence why I want to, you know, begin starting to trade some of these alts. I won't lose focus. Uh, very, very disciplined while trading some of these alts, especially as I am beginning with the Binance altcoins. Um, obviously, I've been trading, you know, crypto for a while, but not really so much lower market cap coins because of the liquidity issues. Uh, you know, if I want to enter big positions, uh, you know, if and, and the coin has got not very much liquidity, then you could be a long time trying to enter. That's why I don't trade them, because I prefer to, you know, see an entry enter without having to worry about liquidity gain in and also selling uh, there's a liquidity issue as well that that's why i generally don't trade it so i was going to see how it goes uh, obviously since today's been a successful day so uh one of one nice uh, and then yeah just to finish that i have entered uh, or uploaded a new script for you all so if you would like to uh review or use uh this uh, market fertility market fat market fat 
Facilitation Index. Well done, Daniel. Uh, so if you would like to use the MFI, <laughs> uh, this is obviously a Bill Williams indicator, so uh, I'm not taking credit for this, but the inbuilt um, market facil facilitation index in TradingView is very poor. The colors are incorrect, etc. So this is a better. <laughs> um, I, I like I like Bill Williams, by the way. So shout out to Bill Williams if you don't know who he is. He's a very successful trader. Uh, really recommend him. I, I have read his books and think he's brilliant. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I will do a video more explaining how to use the Bill Williams um, indicators. Um, but basically, I have given an overview. But uh, sorry about that. I have given an overview of what the colors mean, etc. in the description. But I will do a video dedicated to this, hen you know, because I've obviously released the script. Um, so yeah, take a look at that. That's that's going to be nice, very you know helpful in my opinion. Um, yeah, obviously I do have the other scripts uploaded, but yeah, that's enough of that. That's that's that sorted. Going through here on everything I wanted to go over, um, and yeah, so that's the end. Moving back over to Bitcoin for the last few words. Uh, obviously on the smaller time frame. Yeah, I mean, this is what I want to see. Some ending in some sort of spinning top doji's shooting star uh, would be nice for me if we close out or another two and a half hours. So it's a little bit of an overshoot daily looking. Yeah, daily nothing yet. But yeah, we still got so much hours left of the day on. What is it? Six. Yeah, about another six. Why is that taking me long to do maths? Another six hours, more or less. Uh, five and a half hours left on this daily close. So I'm not going to speculate on this yet. Uh, but yeah, the four hour would be nice to close out like this. Obviously, more or less in the entry. But um, yeah, I hope you've all enjoyed this video. Uh, that was everything that I wanted to cover. Please just um, be careful if you're trading this space. Obviously, the, the easiest or most confluence with the less risk is going to be waiting for breaks of the resistances, breaks of the support and entering. I am entering into risky positions right now, but with I'm going to end with the words, with no risk, there is no reward. OK, so think about that and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one, everyone. Cheers. Goodbye.